paranormal case. Annabelle, the Possessed Doll. Annabelle was the focus of a case that feigned paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren took part in during the early 1970s and is highlighted in the book, The Demologist. It has been stated that this is one of the most unusual cases of a possessed object on record. In 1970, a mother purchased an antique Raggedy Ann doll from a hobby store. The doll was a present for her daughter, Donna, on her birthday. Donna at the time was a student in college, preparing to graduate with her nursing degree, and resided in a tiny apartment with her roommate, Angie, a nurse as well. Pleased with the doll, Donna placed it on her bed as a decoration and didn't give it a second thought until a few days later. Within that time, both Donna and Angie noticed that there appeared to be something very strange and creepy about the doll. The doll apparently moved on its own, relatively unnoticeable movements at first, like a change in position. But with the passage of time, the movement became more noticeable. Donna and Angie would come home to find the doll in a completely different room from which they had left it in. Sometimes the doll would be found cross-legged on the couch with its arms folded. Other times, it was found upright, standing on its feet, leaning against a chair in the dining room. Several times, Donna placed the doll on the couch before leaving for work. When she would return, she would find the doll back in her room, on the bed, with the door closed. One night, Donna came home to find the doll had moved again. This time, it was on her bed. Donna had come to find that this was typical of the doll, but somehow, she knew that this time it was different. Something wasn't right. A sense of fear came over her when she inspected the doll and saw what looked like blood drops on the back of its hands and its chest. Seemingly from nowhere, a red liquid had appeared on the doll. Scared and desperate, Donna and Angie decided it was time to seek expert advice. Not knowing where to turn, they contacted a medium and a seance was held. Donna was then introduced to the spirit of Annabelle Higgins. The medium related the story of Annabelle to both Donna and Angie. Annabelle was a young girl that resided on the property before the apartments were built. She was a young girl of only seven years of age when her lifeless body was found in the field upon which the apartment complex now stands. The spirit related to the medium that she felt comfort with Donna and Angie and wanted to stay with them by moving into the doll. Feeling compassion for Annabelle and her story, Donna gave her permission to inhabit the doll and stay. They were to find out, however, that Annabelle was not what she seemed. Later that week, Donna saw that the doll, or Annabelle, was ripped and had jagged cuts along her mouth. Lou was a longtime friend of Donna and Angie and had been with them since the day the doll arrived. He had never been fond of the doll and on several occasions, he warned Donna that it was evil, saying that she should get rid of it. However, Donna had developed a personal tie to the doll and decided to keep it, despite Lou's feelings. Her decision was a terrible mistake.
One night, Lou awoke with a jolt of terror. A jolt that didn't seem like it was from his usual nightmares. Somehow, something felt different. What would appear to be a common case of sleep paralysis became all too real. He looked around the room, but couldn't discern anything out of the ordinary. At first, anyway. Looking down towards his feet, he saw the doll. Annabelle. It began to slowly glide up his leg, moving over his chest and stopping at his neck. Helpless against it, the doll began to strangle him. After a moment, Lou, at the point of asphyxiation, blacked out. He awoke the next morning, certain it wasn't an ordinary night terror, and was determined to rid himself of that doll and the spirit that possessed it. Preparing for a road trip the next day, Lou and Donna were reading over maps alone in her apartment. The apartment was eerily quiet. The silence was broken when rustling sounds coming from Donna's room aroused fear that someone had broken into the apartment. Lou, determined to find out what was causing the noise, quietly made his way to the bedroom door. He waited for the noises to stop before entering and turning on the light. The room was empty except for Annabelle, whom was tossed in a corner on the floor. Lou searched the room for signs of forced entry, but nothing was out of place. As he got closer to the doll, he got the distinct impression that somebody was behind him. Spinning around, Lou found that despite his unease, nobody besides himself and the doll were in the room. Then in a flurry of motion, he found himself double over in pain, with blood dripping from a cut on his chest. Upon opening his shirt, there on his chest were what appeared to be seven distinct claw marks. I hope you enjoyed this article. And should you ever want to visit the infamous Annabelle, she can be found at the Warren Occult Museum in Moodus, Connecticut. The museum is run by Lorraine Warren, the famous paranormal investigator and now frequent guest on the television show Paranormal State. Housed in a glass case at the museum, you will find Annabelle. Mrs. Warren relates that Annabelle still moves about occasionally and is still known to make growling noises at unsuspecting visitors.